Governor DeWine saying at his news conference yesterday that Southwest Ohio is being hit pretty hard with clusters of the virus. And one of the places most at risk for infection is jails and prisons. Well, earlier today, we actually got some good news about the Cuyahoga County Jail. Our senior health correspondent, Monica Robbins, joins us live now to explain this good news. Monica, hi. It is good news, Laura. Yeah, of the nation's top 10 COVID-19 outbreaks, all have been in jails or prisons. And back in early March, the overcrowded Cuyahoga County Jail seemed to be the perfect situation for a mass infection. But Metro Health, who provides medical care for the jail, says they work quickly to keep the number of virus cases at the facility low. And jail medical director Julia Brunner says staff quickly isolated patients most at risk, while fast decisions were made in court about which prisoners could be moved. But it was another key decision that really helped keep the coronavirus out of the jail. And the sheriff looked at it from the direction of reducing the risk of the people that were coming into the jail. So. Um, reducing the churn, the number of people that were, were coming into the jail. And that had a huge impact on our ability to manage as well, because if the if the number of people coming into the jail uh, was cut in half, that reduces the, the potential exposures coming in. And Dr. Werner says jail staff worked extra hard to keep the areas of the jail cleaned and sanitized and extra masks and PPE equipment was brought in for both staff and prisoners to wear. And because of all that, for the first time since early April, there are no known positive cases of COVID-19 among inmates at the Cuyahoga County Jail. So it is good news, Laura. Hopefully we can keep it that way, right? And Monica, we understand that another local hospital system is now working to find out the mystery behind coronavirus antibodies and how some workers on the front lines might actually eventually be tested for those antibodies? Yeah, you're exactly right. Today, University Hospitals began testing about 10,000 frontline caregivers and first responders. Now, whether they have the disease, tested negative, or never had a test, volunteers will be tested to provide information needed to move forward with how to take care of the patients. And if they know how many have been exposed and have antibodies, it may actually help reveal the actual reach and of the disease, and it may also help doctors better understand the test methods. We can learn who can contract the infection and not actually develop the disease. So we don't, uh, they contract the infection, but they remain asymptomatic. That can help also with that. I'm anxious to find out if I was exposed at all to the virus. Um, I'm an infectious disease fellow here, so I've definitely been taking care of some COVID positive patients. So um, I've never been symptomatic, but it'll be interesting um, to get the test result. So what's the difference, you may be wondering, between this antibody test and those nasal swabs? Well, if someone is found to have COVID antibodies in their blood, it means they were already infected at some point in the past. The other test lets doctors know if the patient is currently infected with the virus. But we still don't know if the presence of antibodies means a person is immune to COVID-19 or if they can't get reinfected. And even if they test negative for antibodies, it doesn't necessarily necessarily mean they haven't been infected with COVID-19 because some people's bodies just don't amount enough of an immune response to be detected. So as you can imagine, testing has quite a ways to go still. Laura. Still have a lot to learn about COVID-19. Monica Robbins, thank you so much.